Hello. Something I figured out about the focus is if I stay back, uh, it stays in focus better, and the light, I'm still working on it. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, a team. <laughs> I mentioned that. Here's a little bit more information. Uh, I'm still thinking about this. I'm not at all sure I can afford to do this myself, but I know I'd like to. Uh, I'm waiting for comments. Uh, people see that video, send me a comment. Say, hey, I'd like to do that with you. Ten days, I think it would cost about, it could be done for about $2,000, everything from Washington. That's all the travel, all the lodging, all the food. For about $1,000 uh, if you're coming from Europe because uh, the flight is so much cheaper. Um, then we go to Madrid, uh, take the train to Santiago, work there for five days, take the train to Lisbon, take the train back to Madrid, and then home. Uh, now at that mill, there was a second lower mill that uh, I f forgot to film. It's, it, we didn't go down there. It's smaller. It was, uh, a, it was public. It was not a private mill. Uh, and I have some thoughts about that. I wish I had seen it a cl closer. Um, but. Uh, but anyway, I just thought, well, I would mention that. Uh, it, it is truly a wonderful, wonderful sight, what I have shown. Sorry about my video moving around so much, but I was excited. That was an exciting day, all in all, because in the morning, as you saw, we, we walked all through something out of the Compostela. After lunch, during Strosse's lunch break, really, that was when we... Uh, took the walk to the mill, the drive and the walk to the mill, and uh, then I got to meet his lovely colleague. There was a young woman uh, that, uh, that worked, uh, works with Chausse, and she uh, was going with Chausse to Lugo, Spain, and we rode along. A lovely person. And uh, she and Chausse were speaking Gallego together, so I got to hear it. Uh, I was, um, I understood mostly what they were saying, although I was in such a haze now by language. I'd, I'd been with German and been with French and Spanish and uh, I couldn't tell if they were speaking Portuguese or Spanish or Gallego, but I, I understood it. And, and they said they know. Uh, there's absolutely distinct languages. They, they can speak any of the three and they know which one they're speaking <laughs> with me. It was a haze. But I get to hear it. Well, anyway, when, when uh, we got to Lugo, Spain, <clears throat> they had work to do, so they left Erica and me alone. This was maybe four in the afternoon, and I think the videos will explain uh, themselves. Uh, uh, there's a Roman wall around Lugo. I knew about that from a little bit of research I'd done, but I did not realize I would be going to that city. Since I found out that that Roman wall is the, I think that's the only city in the world that has a, a continuous Roman wall the whole way around the city. And Eric and I walk on that wall. You'll, you'll see it. You'll see plenty of it. The video, again, is not perfectly made. I, all of a sudden it's going to start and there's a man singing and dancing and leading children. That was such a pleasant scene. Uh, I wish I had gotten more of the man, but, you know, I'm not a professional photographer. And these are details. Some of the videos are dark inside the church. Uh, and I guess one other thing I'll mention is uh, Chausse, such a very educated man, he was telling me, that I think if I have this right, that General Franco, uh, who was the dictator of Spain for so long, he had the idea of breaking major holes through that wall to open the city center to big highways. Uh, and I, it was all planned to do it. And, and if I understand Franco, uh, if I understand Chausse, they just didn't do it. <laughs> the bishop or something, the church, said don't. And, and he was a dictator, but uh, everything was set to do it, but they didn't. Well, now it's protected. I saw that. I just looked it up. It's, it's a World Heritage Site. Uh, so you'll see that. Um, all right, uh, we'll see you next time.